the NFL playbook. Um, no, CS and Chop, CSU and Chop haven't drunk Poly Juice Potion. We are Team Killer B. Apparently, they did so well, they st stuck in the backups for some mop-up time. So we're here to talk a little football with you. Um, Brett, how many lineups did we have Colin Kaepernick in yes last week? Four? Three? At Too least many. three, if not four main lineups. And I think, um, when, yeah, I think when Luke says three or four, he means like – three or four main ones, which are multiple, multiple in multiple leagues. So go I ahead. mean, to keep this PC, I'll just say his linens were soiled when it was all said and done. Yeah. So what's going on? Here? I mean, full disclosure, uh, Colin's first cousin's name is Casey Kaepernick. He is married to a woman who grew up two houses from me and four houses from Brett. And one time her name is Tisha. Her and I were skipping rocks in the lake. I had one stick hit her right between the eyes, left a gash that's still a scar. Any chance that performance was just revenge against us, or is Colin Kaepernick just the worst? Well, Colin Kaepernick's, you know, he's going through some rough times here. Um, but, you know what, a good, uh, good way to get out of that stretch is a New Orleans Saints defense that gives it up. So um, I'm not writing him off yet. Uh, definitely he's got – He's got potential. Um, just got to hope that instead of throwing the bad passes like he's been doing, that, in, you know, go through his uh, – look at his – you know, whatever his main wide receiver for the route is, go down to his second. But if that stuff's not open, run the ball. That's what you do yeah. well. You know, it's like he, I think he's trying to become too much of a quarterback, and he's just not that good of a quarterback. No. I mean – He's he's got viable options there. I mean, look at his look at his three wide receivers. Look at his tight end. I mean, some of the better guys in the game. And we're we're asking ourselves, when is Vernon Davis ever gonna have a game? Well, when is Colin Kaepernick ever gonna learn how to throw the ball? It's, I don't it's, think that's happening. Yeah, I think it's, we got to get run. I think it's like Russell Wilson, where he attacks the field with his feet. If it's not there, Kaepernick for whatever reason is not. I don't know if you think it's coaching or if he's afraid. I, I don't know what it is, but I mean, he is. Right now, if you go to DK, he's the 11th best quarterback in fantasy points per game. And, you know, that's not going to show you Luck, Brady, or Rivers because they're off this week. Um, I'm leaning towards just he's the worst. But if there is if there is going to be an improvement, I feel like it's a shootout, right? It feel, the playoff games, the games where he, like – I mean, we're Packer fans. When he uncorks the run, it just rips your soul out. And right. then you're cold at Lambeau Field and you don't get to play anymore. Right. So. I'm more uh, pessimistic than you, I think. But you think we would consider rolling him out again this week? Yeah, I mean, look, the guy, there's a lot of talent there. He's just got to he's gotta learn to do what he's doing well and not keep doing what he's not doing well. <laughs> so what he's not doing well is trying to force it into tight coverages. He's throwing picks. He's ending drives. He's not using his legs. You know, use those legs. The Saints – Dude, in New Orleans, he's going to have a lot of potential to put up some big points. So, um, yeah. you know. We'll say that game is in New Orleans, though, right? Right. Which, yeah. which I think is good uh, offensively for both teams. Um, being in a dome, not having to worry about San Francisco, windy weather. Uh, you know, you're in a dome. You, you get to pass the ball. You know, you get to, you get to use the, the fast Stevie Johnson on turf, you know. So, and Stevie Johnson's been their best wide receiver, which is really weird. I mean, no doubt, I think Bolden's been the most consistent. We're waiting to see Crabtree uh, kind of make his big debut. He really hasn't had a big debut yet. Um, but, yeah, Bolden's been most consistent. Stevie Johnson's impressed me at wide receiver three. And, you know, where is Vernon Davis? And yeah, he's, and he's got weapons. He's got Brandon Lloyd there, who I think led the NFL in receiving one year to catch a deep one every once in a while. Like, he should be better. And it's just a question of we can diagnose it, but unless the coaching staff diagnoses it, I don't know how we can have much hope that they fix it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so the NSNCA uh, touchdown leader is coming back this week. Not that he's yeah. a badger, but I'm just saying he played on that field right there. Monte um, ball. Who knows what that does to the Denver, uh, the Denver backfield. Hillman's been great. Hillman's been great. Uh, so, Hoochie, what in the name of crazy like Hurts is going on in that backfield? All right, this is what I see. I see, okay, it's very obvious to anybody that Ronnie Hillman's more effective than Monte Ball. No doubt about it. But 
what I think is going to happen here is very similar to what happened in 2013. You're going to get Monte Ball is going to play, guess what, the Monte Ball of 2013. Uh, he's going to sit on the sidelines for a couple possessions. Then he's going to be in quite a bit for one full possession. Seemed like Denver liked doing that because they were running hurry-up offense, right? So when one, one running back's out there, they're going to keep that guy out there because they're going to run some quick plays. Um, obviously, it matters with the pace of the game, what all happens. Denver's playing in Oakland, so this game could get out of hand in no time. Um, they, they don't really need Monte Ball this week, but what I see moving forward is, hey, uh, you're going to get a you're going to get a full drive maybe once out of every three drives. That's the way I see it going down. Yeah. Um do you have any explanation for his ineffectiveness early in the year? Like he is literally the only running back that's ever stood behind Peyton Manning that hasn't been good. Yeah. I mean, Joseph yeah. Adai is just chuckling like, "What? You couldn't be good behind him? What are you doing?" Yeah. I think every running back would love to be in that Denver system cuz I mean, you're going to see the ball in the red zone. There's going to be lots of opportunity to get touchdowns. And the boxes are always going to be – a lot of times it's going to be zone defense. I mean, you saw Peyton Manning have actually trouble with some of the zone defense, but you're never going to see a, a running back have troubles with his zone defense. Yeah, I, I, I can't explain what happened in the first four or five weeks. Do I expect Monte Ball to be that bad? No. Uh, was he that bad last year? No. So um, – I expect him hopefully looking like the Monte Ball of old, maybe the Monte Ball of senior year uh, at Wisconsin, just scoring a bunch 39 of 39 touchdowns, 39 touchdowns. I think he doesn't have enough games left for 39 touchdowns. You know, no. he had multiple touchdowns 13 weeks in a row. I think the most pressing question here is this, Hooch. Uh, are you willing to start Hillman this week? Are you willing to – I mean, are you worried that Ball is going to take too much? Or are you willing to run him out there? Because his price has been kind of – Yeah. Yep, Ronnie's, Ronnie's price is definitely going up, as it should. Uh, just remember here, Ronnie Hillman could have crazy stats right now. If you remember yep. a few weeks ago, yeah, I mean. Uh, like I don't remember, <laughs> like it wasn't a dagger in our heart. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he could have had a four-touchdown game, and he ended up with zero of them. So, uh, I, mean, this guy, I mean, this guy could be the best running back in, in the NFL the last three weeks if he would just – learn to run <laughs> if, if, if the bad luck wouldn't have hit him. I mean, yep. I mean, we're talking inches on a few of these touchdowns. Uh, You're, of so. course, talking to that Thursday night game against the Chargers. There's a holding away from the ball. It's just garbage. Right. Right. So if my wife sends me to the liquor store, you can rest assured I'm coming home with the materials from mimosas. I'm just going to do it every time. Orange juice, champagne, it's just going to happen. So if CSU and Chop leave us to run the NFL podcast, this is the NFL playbook, we're talking about the Packers. I, I don't care. We're talking about yeah. the Packers. We, we gave them a little bit of dapper with a Denver run game, but we don't need to touch anybody else. So, Hartfield, the Green Bay Packers offense, the best? What do you think? Most efficient, no doubt. Most efficient. The only reason why they're not putting up gaudy Andrew Luck numbers right now, I think, is teams, teams really have either been getting crushed by them uh, or, or something that has happened to Aaron Rodgers last week, you know, where it, or two weeks ago where he pulled a hammy. So yeah. look, at, look at his games like he really hasn't had to play in the fourth quarters of a lot of these games, you know. Uh, they, they really blew out uh, some of these teams. I, I should go back in his game log here to see what games they were. But, uh, yeah, Carolina, I mean. Minnesota. Yeah, you know, I mean, these weren't, these weren't fourth quarter games, you know. So. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're looking at the matchup here, uh, Chicago at Green Bay, are we going to see the Jay Cutler's C game? If we see Jay Cutler's C game. It's going to be a two to three touchdown game. So um, it makes me think like instead of buying too heavily on the pass game that we start looking at Eddie Lacy now that the cold weather is starting to set in. Um, obviously, Lacy last year with the cold weather was phenomenal. but they didn't have number 12 hanging in the ball last year. Yeah, last year was the a second. Yeah, so a couple weeks so there. What type of uh, what type of Eddie Lacy are we going to get this year in the winter time? I don't know. Uh, um, I would bet that Eddie Lacy starts, you know, racking up some yards, some touchdowns, no doubt, because we're going to have to lean on him uh, in close games. And 
weather starts getting cold, uh, you know, it's going to be tougher to pass the ball. We're going to need those third down and shorts to, uh, you know, keep on, keep the drives going. He's going to get his touchdowns. There's just no doubt about it. So uh, the Packers looks like they're favored to score, what, four times, four times this week. Uh, they're at 30.25. So let's just say they get four touchdowns. I can definitely see Rodgers getting three and Lacey getting one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lacey surprisingly uh, caught, what, 150 yards or something last week against New Orleans, two weeks ago against New Orleans. That could be a wrinkle that would really help out a Lacey owner if you ran him out there. Um, yeah. Remember, Hooch, I mean, the Bears' defense, when they played him a couple weeks ago, was basically youth T-ball. Everybody gets a ribbon. I mean, Nelson has two touchdowns. Cobb has two touchdowns. I mean, that's the game you play with the Packers is you're playing wide receiver roulette, right? Right. right. Um, and now that Devontae Adams has stepped up a little bit, maybe that hurts him. I think you run them both out there. Feel confident with either one. If you're $400 shorter, go with Cobb. Otherwise, go with Nelson. Um, but I will note that uh, Nelson's targets – significantly higher than Cobbs, despite the fairly even production. So if you have the 400, I go to Nelson. Uh, Buyer buy beware, though. Check check weather before you roll out with anybody. Uh, we are now in November, and me and Lewis know how Wisconsin weather is in November. It can be can be pretty ridiculous. So um, if, if you've got windy conditions, snowy conditions, uh, do not be rolling out. Rogers, confidently, Jordy confidently um that's the time to probably start buying more shares of Eddie Lacey yep uh and Rodgers isn't Peyton Manning he doesn't run all those rubs and picks and short stuff Rodgers is going down the field which means you know more more affected by the wind well because he has a stronger arm and he's just a better quarterback than Peyton Manning well he's the best I don't you can't do better than the best yeah, right. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to wrap it up today for the uh, NFL playbook for Team Killer B and our belated third partner, Kurt Hartfield. You guys have a good day. Thanks.